Hello Vinyl community. So uh, this is another report of my uh, uh, listening uh, behavior and uh, I want to start with an album that probably belongs to my top 10 of uh, all time uh, albums although I haven't made this kind of list for uh, many many years or decades it's more something we did when we were young kids, isn't it? But um, if I did that, this album would probably be part of it. I'm talking about Will Power by Joe Jackson. Now this wonderful instrumental album came out in 1987 and uh, uh, was certainly a different kind of result um, in Joe Jackson's uh, career than anybody had probably expected at this point in time. But that is what he wanted to do, a large canvas orchestral album. Uh, and it's a masterpiece, there is no doubt about that. It's very atmospheric, it is evocative. Yeah, and I mean the music, the music is orchestral, but it is very carefully merged with a touch of uh, sort of jazzy vibes and even a hint of uh, of a certain no wave atmosphere so this is uh, if you like instrumental music or if you have a knack for let's say impressionistic music from Ravel or Debussy onward into the modern orchestral sounds. Um, this is probably an album you would appreciate. Uh, it has one of the coolest uh, sleeve photographs I've ever seen. So I can only recommend it. This is really a nice, uh, nice jewel in everybody's record collection. Yeah, after that, I had listened to "It's Time for Love" by Teddy Pendergrass. So something completely different, an early '80s album with an um, excellent soul singer. So this is a very expressive, emotional music. Uh, I'm just getting to know Teddy Pendergrass and I uh, was very happy with this album. Also when I bought it, it came with this nice typed info sheet by CBS <laughs> in German. So I always like these little finds in records. So uh, my two favorite songs on this album are coincidentally the last two which is rather rare on records usually uh, you probably find your favorite somewhere at the beginning oftentimes but here it's the two songs I can't leave your love alone and you must live on which uh, are also very groovy so uh, this is a beautiful album and because this already had put me into this soulful mood I thought I can uh, push the envelope a little further by the self-titled album by Gregory Hines. Now Gregory Hines is probably more known for his work as a um, Hollywood actor and comedian. But as we know he's a great dancer and also a fantastic singer. Now this album was completely written and produced by Luther Vandross. So, um, this is kind of the sound you get, so it's also uh, soul pop music, uh, very very calm, very mellow, very emotional. It's a lot of, a lot of longing and yearning, yet is not, um, it's even softer than the previous one, yeah, by Teddy Pendergrass, but um, he's not so expressive as a singer. So if you are a fan of 80s soul music, it's a relevant choice. Yeah, now the next one, 
is uh, the also the self-titled album by Donna Summer. Well, that's on a really uh, interesting album. I mean, it's it's not an excellent album. I would not say that. So Donna Summer became famous in the late seventies, mostly through her work with uh, Pete Bellot and Giorgio Moroda. Now these two guys, of course, had a ball with her by uh, stylizing, by uh, designing her as this kind of a disco queen and sex icon with uh, with bold electronic dance music, and uh, obviously um, this was uh, this has become a problem for Donna Summer at a certain point in time because she discovered Jesus. And uh, so she was looking for a change of image and uh, she signed up with Geffen and made this heavily overproduced album uh, that was produced by Quincy Jones. So um, you are guaranteed that this is a very good sounding album. There are some brilliant musicians on it. I mean, people like Ndugu Chancellor on drums. Um, but... Uh, so as part of a of a background chorus, you find the craziest names you can imagine, ranging from Michael Jackson to Kenny Jones and Stevie Wonder. There's even Bruce Springsteen on this album. Um, yeah, I mean, there are good tunes on it. It's not a bad album, I wouldn't say that. One part of it kind of always makes me grin or cringe a little bit. But not in a bad way, but um, this album contains, and this was probably the highlight of the whole production, it contains a cover version of State of Independence, which of course is a song that came out a year before that, a year earlier, and it's a song by John and Vangelis on their, on her, their album The Friends of Mr. Cairo. Now of course we are talking about John Anderson lyrics, so if you know John Anderson, you can imagine how the lyrics are. So I've always kind of... Uh, <laughs> so I always thought that this is somehow hilarious because there is this uh, solid, bona fide, top-notch pop, soul and disco singer standing in the studio learning John Anderson lyrics which are, of course, co completely outlandish as usual. I mean... Just to understand what I'm talking about, I'm talking about lines like uh, Coming out the sky, I name me a name, coming out, silver word for what it is. It is the very nature of the sound, the game. Shabla midi, shabla mida, Siamese, Indonese, to Tibet, treat the life, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, <laughs> I wonder what went through her head <laughs> when reading these lyrics. I'm thinking just... What the hell is that all about? <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, also, I have a little here, seven inch. Sometimes when I have seven inches that kind of belong to a certain album, I just throw them into the sleeve. So oftentimes when I pick up an album, there falls some seven inch out of it. So the next album I listen to is quite well known. I'm talking about Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood by Santa Esmeralda. Probably the one seminal peak of the disco culture. So I throw it on a turntable like once a year. And it never feels like wasted time. Yeah, and finally, uh, another great album is One Down by Material. So uh, this is, uh, I think it was like third or fourth album by Material. It depends how you count the chronology. Uh, very interesting uh, record. Uh, there is some outstanding keyboard playing by Michael Beinhorn. Great Bill Laswell bass. Um, the album has Nona Hendrix as a lead vocalist. So as usual with Material, uh, Every album is somehow completely different and is based on complete, completely different musical premises, which is very interesting. Not many bands could have ever done that, create a series of five, six LPs, and uh, they are all 
pretty much completely different from each other. There's even a song here, Memories, with Whitney Houston on vocals. So that's interesting. So you have Nile Rogers playing on this album, of course Fred Frith on guitar. So yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's, least, it's, it's, it's less jazzy than their previous record and more directed to a certain pop aesthetic. Uh, it's a good listen, came out in 1982 uh, on Elektra Asylum. Yeah, and that's it for now, although I always said that at the end of a video I will show one or two interesting CDs. So uh, let me do that. Um, just quickly. Now this one is um, it's a soundtrack by A.R. Rahman to the Bollywood movie Tal. A real classic soundtrack in the vast, inexhaustible catalogue of Bollywood uh, music. But this one is really a seminal album and uh, always a good listen from time to time. And that is how far I came. So um, see you next time after I have heard some more records. So probably like tomorrow or something. Have a nice day. Keep your head up. And um, let's listen to music. Bye bye.